Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In Research Methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Hello and welcome to our lesson 79 which is a continuation of what we have just done. We have just completed lesson 78 by looking at some of the areas that you need to be keen on as you format uh, your thesis dissertation or project. So this is a continuation of that section and we'll be looking at, we remind ourselves what we, the areas that we have looked at in lesson 78. So we have talked about the font size and font style. We have said the minimum is 10, the maximum is 14 and APA 7th edition allows us to use various styles which we discussed in lesson 74. We have also talked about when to use the bold only for headings, only for headings level 1 to level 5. Then the spacing we have said across the whole document should be double spaced. You avoid hanging headings or titles and white space. You avoid orphans and widows. You use numbers only when you are describing numbers that are less than 10, but numerals when you are describing is ab above 10. And then margins should be aligned. I mean, sh margins should be to one inch and should be left aligned. Do not justify the right margin. So we continue from there and we look at lists and bullets when writing numbered or bulleted list use parallel structure for each item lettered list and this is where you are using the arabic i mean the roman new uh, numbering apa requires parentheses when using letters with a series and you separate each item with a comma or semicolon for instance, in the same st sentence, if I wanted to explain the three methods of acquiring knowledge in research and I want to list them using Roman, then it will be in the same line. So the three methods of acquiring knowledge in research are A, experience, comma, B, reasoning, and C, scientific inquiry. And then if that is the end of the sentence, then I put a full stop. Numbered. You use numbers for complete sentences. Complete sentences. For instance, when you want to state the objectives of the study, you cannot use Roman. Because Roman means it is not a complete sentence. You know, it is a continuation of a sentence like we have explained earlier. But when you want to list, because each objective represents a variable of the study. It is, a com it is complete in itself. Then you use numbering like what we have shown here to determine the influence of X on Y that you use numbering. You use bullets when you want to avoid the perception of priority connoted in numbered lists. There is a perception that when you have numbered then the first, maybe the one which is number one, carries more weight than the one that, that is numbered last. So when you want to avoid that perception, then you use bullets. And when you use bullets, each bullet should begin with a lowercase letter. For instance, the three methods of acquiring knowledge in research are, so bullet one, which is experience, the E, the second one, reasoning, R, and the third one, scientific inquiry, S, they are, they, are, they are not capitalized. You use lowercase letter. Tables and figures. Tables should not have vertical lines as well as horizontal lines. That's why we talk about APA tables, and that is similar to what, it was, what was in seventh, uh, sixth edition. Tables and figures should be named consecutively. That is table one, 
to the last, figure one to the last. And like we have mentioned earlier, some institutions you still require you to number the table as per the chapter number. So follow the institutional guidelines. If the tables and figures are placed in the text, they should be aligned to the left and follow a paragraph that refers to the table or the figure. You find that in most cases, students will put their table, they will center their table when they have drawn them after a text. Now, what you need to do now is to ensure that that table is aligned to the left and it follows the paragraph that refers to the table. For instance, you wanted to describe gender distribution of your respondents and you indicate that the following table one represents gender as you know, the way you would want to uh, your reader to read, then you bring in your table immediately after the paragraph that des has described that table. Please do not refer to the table figure using either above or below. Do not split the table or the figure. Do not have a table flowing to the next page. And APA 7th edition allows you to place figures and tables on separate page at the end of the document. So it is possible to have all your tables and figures on a separate page at the end of the document. But of course, for, for many of the academic documents, because of the flow of content, this may not apply. But if this is what your institution requires, then you may need to follow that. The number of the table uh, or the figure should be placed above the figure, uh, the, the figure or the table in bold. Then it should be flash left followed by the table, by the number of the table. I know this, 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 this sounds complicated, but we explained it in lesson 74. We said, for instance, my figure is conceptual framework. So I will write conception i mean i'll write figure one when i write figure one then below the figure number i write conceptual framework in apa 6 edition we were writing figure one colon conceptual framework but now the, the the number should be at the top and then the name of the figure or the table should be below and this is what we discussed in lesson 74 so that is the what the second bullet says that the title of the table or the figure should be below the table or the figure number and it should be italicized it should be italicized so the title of the page so i've written figure one then i write below it i write conceptual framework and i italicize double space the figure and the table number and title so I have figure one, then I double space and write conceptual framework. I have table five, which is gender distribution of the respondents. I mean, I have table one, then I double space and I write gender distribution of the respondents. If there is a need to describe the table further, place the word note below the table and it should be italicized. So write the word after you have drawn your table. So this is table one then i have double spaced i give the name the name is gender distribution and then i want to describe it further because this table maybe i have carried it from a certain reference where i would uh, i would wish that my reader can refer to for further information so once i have finished drawing the table below the table i write the word note and this note should be italicized and this note gives, uh, uh, for instance, the source of the table. Was it adapted? Was it adapted? Where was it adapted from? Who drew the table first? Which is the primary? Who is the primary author of that table? Once you have finished with, now with the table, if you had any note, you have indicated the note. Then, from the next or the text that follows, should be separated with a double space line so separate the figure or the table from the text with one blank double spaced line appendix it should have a label and a title if you only have one then use the heading as appendix bolded capitalized and centered if they are multiple appendix are numbered as a b c d not 
one, two, three. So there will be appendix A, appendix B, appendix C, etc. And we said this is the only area where you are allowed to uh, underline direct quotations. APA 7th edition distinguishes between direct quotations of less than 40 words and above 40 words. A quote of less than 40 words is incorporated in the sentence using quotation marks. If a quote is more than 40 words, you are allowed, required to block format the quotation, meaning the quotation should start on a new line indented 0.5 uh, 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 inches from the left and double spaced. So this we had mentioned earlier. Some institution will require you to single space. APA requires you to double space the quotation. So remember we keep saying where there is a conflict between your institution and APA, then precedence is given to the institution. Cite more of the primary sources where possible and use secondary sources sparingly. Cite both paraphrases and direct quotations and it is preferable to paraphrase sources rather than directly quote, uh, quoting them because paraphrasing allows you to bring in your thoughts in the context or in that text that you are quoting. If you quote directly from a text, make sure you include the author, the year and the page number. But if you paraphrase, then you are allowed to only include, include the author and the year. References. A reference list at the end of this is uh, or dissertation should include all the sources that you have cited in the text. Of course with the heading or the label references which is bolded, capitalized and centered. We said all entries should be double spaced with a hanging indent of, this, of 0 0.5 for the second and subsequent lines and there should be in order by the first listed author's name. So you should follow the alphabet when you are listing the references. Note that, like we had mentioned earlier, you may use single space for a reference, but use double space between two references. Abbreviations. Abbreviations should re be written out completely when first mentioned in the text, followed by the abbreviations in parentheses. For instance, if you want to abbreviate University of Nairobi, the first mention should have the full name and then you put brackets, the round ones, and show the abbreviation. Then subsequently now you can use the abbreviation. And that brings us to the end of our lesson where we have now talked about the way we format our thesis and dissertation. The next lesson, lesson 8, we will still focus on uh, APA 7th edition and we shall look at more examples of how we need to format our work so that it conforms to the guidelines that have been given. Thank you for being part of this class. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like and share this lesson and feel free to ask any question in the comments section.